children. Amen. So what you make happen for me, God will make happen for you. Praise God. Now to today's teaching, I trust God for an amazing time in the world. Father, we receive grace to receive your word this morning. This word will not return to you, boy, but will accomplish maximum impact in the lives of everyone that you have sent it. In the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hand on your chest. Say, Lord, I receive wisdom. Lord, Lord I, I receive, receive wisdom. Wisdom to become the best I can be in 2024. Wisdom to become the best I can be in, in 2024. Jesus' name. So Amen. I'll be speaking expressly on the subject. Become the best you can be in 2024. This is going to be a two teaching series. We'll start today and then we we'll conclude next Sunday. Amen. So invite your friends, as I said again. Bring people in. Cause them to come. Spread the flyer. Circulate it on your social media platform. Let them come and be blessed. The best. Become the best you can be in 2024. Now... We need to understand that as we have entered into 2024, a lot of people have come up with the slogan, uh, no grief for anybody this year. I mean, how many of you have been hearing that slogan? As a matter of fact, it has even come to the attention of the police force that this no grief for anybody is becoming a problem to the society. Because a lot of people have the mentality that when they say no grief for anybody, it's about making trouble. Amen. Yeah. Now, if you are not careful, uh, that, that what is what is involved may not necessarily be in line with vision. Am I talking to somebody? Now, the Bible says when there is no vision, the people perish. So, when people start to pass across a certain kind of thinking and mentality, the principalities and powers, they take advantage of it to establish a pattern of behavior that is negative and detrimental to the fulfillment of the destiny of many. So no grief for anybody. How about you think about it this way? Uh, that mentality tells you that it is somebody that is the reason for why you are where you are. It is somebody else that is the reason for where you should be and they are not letting you get there. It's a mentality that says that it is somebody else that is to blame for the level where you find yourself today in life. It's a mindset that engraves irresponsibility in the minds of people if taken the negative way. Am I talking to somebody? So how about no grief for yourself this year 2024? No grief for yourself. Every time I remember, no grief for yourself in this 2024. No grief for yourself in 2024. He said, charity begins at all. He said, a man's enemies are the members of his own household. <laughs> That's Jesus speaking. The authority of heaven, and I said, a man's enemies are the members of his own household. When I say members of your household, some of us are tempted to think of somebody in the village that is affecting him in the Lagos. <laughs> some people are thinking of that uncle, that friend, that sister, that a jealous stepbrother or jealous stepsister that is always going to Babalawo, carry my name about. No, that's not what we're talking about. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. One of the major members of your household is your mouth, your tongue. How you use it determines when you will find yourself in future. You can say something that can close the door for 2024. And you can open your mouth and it will open several doors for you in 2024. A man's enemy. Say the power of life and death is in the tongue that is a member of your body. What about your eyes, your legs, your ears? What you use your ears to hear? What you use your hands to do? Where you carry your legs to? The company of people you keep with your own legs. Nobody forced you. You went today, you walked in the church with your two legs. It was your choice to be here. So, the enemies of your household is number one, is you. Amen. Amen. So, the enemy of your best is you yourself. Do you want the best for yourself? It will be reflective in how you package yourself in this your current status. So let's look at your current status. Your current status today. Let us prove that you are not the enemy of yourself. Your habits. Your lifestyle. And then the results that come out as a result of them. Can you look inwards and stop looking at somebody else as your enemy? 
and tell yourself, if not for the first time or the second time, this 2024, I'm not going to look for who I will not grieve for. I will look for myself this year. Am I talking to somebody? I'm going to stare at myself in the mirror and I'm going to tell myself the truth. Benga, you can do better. Benga, you can do better than this. Benga, you can improve. You can be better than this. You can do it a different way and get a better result. You can have a new set of habits that takes you from one level to another. You can develop a new lifestyle that can make you change your friends and your associations and then you can have better results coming out of your life, coming out of family, coming out of your children, coming out of your academic coming out of your businesses, coming out of everything that your name is associated with. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26 from the Living Bible. He says, according to the gospel of the Paul, apostle, he says, in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets first prize. So, what does that mean? You have to be strategic in the way you run your own, because that Cup that you are saying is only one person. Two people can have it. Just like the race for presidency, two people can be president. Just like the race in your offices or in your business, in that market, the customers you are fighting for, somebody has to get that customer. And if you want it to be you, then you have to run in such a way that you can win. That is talking about your strategy. What is your strategy for 2024 and the years coming after? He said, to win the contest, you must deny yourself many things that you would keep you from doing your best. You must deny yourself many things. Many people want to become the best they can be, but they are not putting in their best. They are putting in average and expecting the best. A wise man said it is madness or craziness to think that you can keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Sometimes we put in average result and we expect it excellent. No, sir. No, ma. Your input determines your output. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. How much are you willing to sow into your own life this year? What will your December look like? It says, uh, doing your best. And Agnes goes to all his trouble to, just to win a blue ribbon or a silver cup. But we do it for heavenly reward and that never disappears. Number 26, it says, so I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. So it is intentional. Everybody say intentional. I run towards the goal. I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. That means I don't take any step carelessly. I take every step thoughtfully. When I invite you to be my friend, I have calculated something. I have seen something about you that tells me we can be friends. I can't invite a dog. I can't invite a tiger to be my friend. I can't invite a rat to be my friend. We don't have nothing in common. So that's why they say, show me your friends and I will show you who you are. I will tell you who you are. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. Hallelujah. I run straight to the goal. Straight to the goal. Straight to the goal. No distraction. Straight to the goal. I'm not carrying excess baggage with me. I'm not carrying failure from 2024, 2023 with me. Amen. I'm coming with success mentality into 2024. He said, I fight to win. This year you will fight to win. You will not fight to lose. He said, I am not just shadow boxing or playing around. This year, 2024, beware of playing around. And beware of people who play around. Don't let nobody play around with your destiny. Don't let nobody play around with your happiness. Don't let nobody play around with your fulfillment. They are the ones that you are always looking for, but they don't look out for you. Don't let nobody play around with your fulfillment and your self-esteem. Don't let gossip ladies, don't let no guy, no man play around with your joy in marriage. Am I talking to somebody? And the guys who are here to get married, don't let no foolish woman play around with your destiny. Am I talking to somebody? Oh yeah, Philippians chapter 3, we 
We look at it from verse 13 to 24 and to 14. There's a special anointing upon us this morning. Monday was Shatarabaya. Say, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or to have arrived. Oh, yes, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to something that is ahead. I believe there is something good ahead of you this year, 2024. Can I hear believe it? Amen. Amen. Have you not heard the prophecies of this year? You are taking new territories. You are having business breakthroughs. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? Now he says, forgetting those things which are behind. What are the things that are behind that you are still carrying into 2024? Bad habits, hopelessness, failure, mentality, different things that shouldn't come with you. Some of us have started the year, we have started repeating old habits already. It's time to put your foot to the ground and say, no! Hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody. Yes, he said, I press toward the mark for the prize. What is the price you are pressing into this year? What is the price and the mark that you have set for yourself? And in line with God, he said, we talked about alignment of goals with prophecies. What are the goals that you have aligned with divine prophecies this year? To access your guaranteed blessings. Am I talking to somebody? This is the time. The Bible says, I press towards a mark for that price. There is a definite price for this year. There is a definite level God wants to get to in 2024. Am I talking to somebody? There is a level that is about to manifest which you have never seen before in your life. And when I begin to share my testimony, some of you will jump off your seat. You'll be able to contain it because it will bring to your understanding all the things I've been talking about since all these years. I told somebody, a career testimony is looking for me. Oh, man, they will shut up a career. Yeah. A ministry testimony is looking for me. Amen. I don't know about you. You are looking at me confessing for myself. I said, a career testimony is looking for me. Remember the message of last year, hunger. How hungry are you? This is the new beginning. Forget the past behind you. Whatever they said about you last year is null and void. God says, I'm opening a new chapter for somebody. Amen. Uh, I said, God said, I'm opening a new chapter for somebody. Amen. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The enemy of the best is you. Are you satisfied with where you are? Are you stuck in the past? Some of you, you are on contractor, but you know you have the capacity to be a full staff somewhere. You can't afford to continue like that. Uh, some of you, you have international relevance. It's loaded, and you know inside of you that I can do this if I have that opportunity. There is nothing that, they didn't have two heads. They are just like you. Opportunity, time and chance came to them. And this year, God will bring the opportunities to you. I'm prophesying now. Amen. God will bring you amazing opportunities this year. Amen. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be stuck in the past. Now, let's look at your potential status in 2024. What are you looking for ahead? Paul said, I forget the past and I press towards the man. I am looking at what lies ahead of me. I am looking at the international future I have. I am looking at living above and beyond the murmuring and complaining of the economy in Nigeria. I'm looking at the time that I will pay the landlord and I'll say, keep the change. And I'm building my house. I'm getting ready to dedicate it. I'm looking at the time when I'll be able to pay cash for a brand new car without loans. Oh my God, I'm looking for the time when they knock at my door for help. I can give them ten times what they're asking for and still not feel it. Is somebody here what I'm talking about this morning? What is your potential status? Your potential status. It begins with the habits you change. It begins with the lifestyle that you are envisioning. It begins with the result that you are anticipating. What is your potential status? Let's look at the book of Daniel chapter 1 from verse 17 to 21. It said, God gave these for you. That is from living Bible. God gave this for you. So we are not talking about old people or 50 years old now. Some of us, we are still young. So God is speaking to you directly now. God is speaking. Somebody say, God is speaking to me. God gave this for you. 
great ability to learn. <laughs> and they soon mastered all the literature and science of the time. Oh man, they both shall talk about it. Somebody say master class. Master class. They attended master class in order to gain mastery. Uh, they were not lazy about. He said they attended. Oh my God. Uh, uh, and they soon mastered all the literature and science of the time. And God came to that special ability. So we say special ability. Special ability. Now look at verse 18 to 19. When the three year training period was completed, uh, somebody is completing their training this year. Yeah. You know the interesting thing about God is that He puts you through a training program so that you can complete that test and training. After which promotion, we hit you down. I have seen it in my life. I have seen it. You know, people repeat cycles because they don't know that God is working with a program for them individually. You can be a husband and a wife, but God be promoting your husband or your wife and you still be on the same level. It's not a matter of husband and wife thing. You, in your own class training with God, are you passing the assignment He gave you to do? The trainings is taking you through. The corrections is giving you part time to shape your life and prepare you so that when the test comes, you'll be able to pass it. Then it can qualify you for that next level. It's God that gives you that kind of training. And if some people jump out of training class and training school, they have gone from the classes. The, the, the class that God has orchestrated for you may also be what I'm teaching you every Sunday in school. That is part of God's program for your life. Otherwise, He will not give you pastors after His heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So, being absent in the class of your pastor is part of the training program. The Bible says the three years training period was completed. It may also be in your place of career. The things you are being taught, they are testing you, they are testing your knowledge to know whether you have mastered certain processes and business concepts, to know whether you can handle the next level of supervision, to know whether they can put you as head of operation, to know whether they can put you in charge of operation, so that they can know whether they can make you a group head or a divisional head or a head of, of, of accounting or a head of admin, whatever place God is preparing for you, is taking you through your program. And these guys, young guys, they attended that class. They made sure they were marking their registers. The young days, the, the youth of today, I met somebody said, they are not ready to learn. They just want to jump every process and begin to earn big money. Uh, that will not be our portion. Amen. Three years training period was completed. This year you will not have a abandoned project in your life. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Form of failure. The spirit of start and not finish, you will not enter into this year with you. Amen. The listeners of 2023, they died here in the name of Jesus. Awake thou the sleepest, and Christ shall give you life. Say, Arise and shine, for thy light is gone. Some are still sleeping in January. Uh, me, I've already entered to life. Some people are still in January. I am, I am in July already. I mean, January is a dumb thing in my program with God. Ah, in the place of prayer, how many months have God delivered to you already? Some people is until they enter into that month that they begin to pray. If we do not institute fasting and prayer or midweek, some people will not drive themselves. Now look at it. Yeah. It says, uh, when the training was completed, the man came for an oral exam. And they, they brought all the young men, including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They brought them before the king, as he had been ordered to do. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, had long talks with each of them. He had long talks. You know, just imagine they invite you to someone's office, governor someone's office. And they bring you before him with other young people and say, Come and talk about your business plan for year 2024. So we can know whether we can finance it. When they begin to bring about current affairs, 
for you to participate in the discussion. They are using it to know your IQ level. They are using it to know your level of reasoning. They are using it to test whether you have capacity. And the Bible says concerning this young man, Mandabo Sheka Baraba, King Nebuchadnezzar had long talks with each of them, and none of them impressed him as much as Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they were put on his regular staff of advisors. Can you see the next level? <laughs> As they had interaction with a great man. Some of you have met great people in your life before, but you messed it up. Because when you open your mind, you couldn't see any, you have nothing tangible to contribute. Or a senior official in your organization visits your location. And they are interacting with you, are asking simple questions, you cannot answer them. That will be a thing of the past in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now is the time for you to shine. Let me tell you, now is my time to shine. Now is my time to shine. He said, and the king was not impressed by all the nonsense the other people are saying. He said, now, now look at this. And the, the, these guys were put on his regular staff of advisor, meaning they are something substantial. They have significant input to make. When they need young people to come and contribute to the progress of Nigeria, may you be found on the list. Can I get amen? Amen. So they were put on the regular staff of advisors. And in all matters requiring information and balanced judgment, <laughs> the king found these men's advice. Ten times better than all of the skilled magicians and wise astrologers in Israel. Rise up to your feet. I'd like you to pray prayer in anger. Lord, this year I receive grace. Oh my God, for uncommon knowledge and balanced judgment. I'd like you to pray that prayer. Put that your hand on your chest. I said, Lord, I receive, I'm not too young to lead. I'm not too young to be a fraud. I'm not too young to be a billionaire. I'm not too young to be a billionaire. Lord, I receive grace for enhanced capacity to learn. Oh, great ability to learn. Lord, grace for mastery in the name of Jesus. Mandishi Kalato Pakasabala. Benaka Protakasa Potena Kita. In the name of Jesus. Now, you may, you may be seated. Let me show you something. There are different levels of development. Hope you know that we are in a competitive environment. We are in a competitive environment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to fire you up this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit. I've come to provoke you to take decisions. There are different levels to capacity and development. There is the ordinary level. Somebody say ordinary. Ordinary. Ordinary ability. Uh, uh, okay, now, if I say everybody stand to your feet, everybody can stand. Right? If I say let's do long job now, we we'll begin to differentiate ourselves. Right? If I say let's do float in the air or high job, that one is no longer uh, ordinary. Again. Now, there is the ordinary level, the ability. That is where everybody else are. Then the great ability to begin to separate the boys from the men. There are people I don't call in my office to help me do things. And there are people I disturb every now and then. Do this for me. I'll call you. If you notice I'm not calling you regularly, you know there's a problem somewhere. If you notice that I'm not in your face disturbing you to do this, do that, know that there is a challenge somewhere. You need to get up on your feet because it's a bad signal. I'm not saying that's who you become or who you are, but it's a sign that you need to go and check again. When tasks cannot be delegated to you, it's a pointer that you are still remaining on the ordinary ability level. When they cannot, de 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 when they cannot delegate to you great tasks, there are small, small tasks. Those ones are for those who are great, those want to be any small, small change. You know, you want to see me any small, small money, no problem. Come and carry my bag for me. Come and help me wash my car. Come and help me clean my house. Come and, uh, come and help me watch after my children. Come and help me do this. You still want to be, you know, on the ordinary ability level. 
Now, find people with great ability. They are the ones that they pay six figures. Am I talking to somebody? Now, there is also another dimension which Bible calls special ability. In this time that we are in, you will not only need great ability, because there are a lot of people now with great ability. Great ability is becoming common. So you will also need a top up. Let me tell you about top up. Top up. Special ability. The, the Bible says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giving them understanding. So when your MD or your boss has a vision and can't find anybody else to interpret it, the Holy Ghost will come to you and say, you know what, do it this way, do it that way, tell him this is the way to work. And then when he hears it, just like those young boys were in front of Nebuchadnezzar, they sounded super correct to him beyond the others. That is the extra that comes from God. This year, I'd like you to engage your spirituality. It's not by power, it's not by my, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So, that supernatural ability of God must come upon you this year. Can I hear you? Amen. When you are in that marketplace, after all of you have exerted your great ability, then there will come a time that everybody seems stuck. Then you will now be distinguished. I pray that somebody will be distinguished this year. Amen. That person will be you this year. Amen. No, no, even too weak. I said, God, you will be distinguished this year. Amen. So don't fake it. It's time for you to attain it. Don't fake it in 2024. Be in that class. Be in that place. Complete your program with God. And when the time is gone, <laughs> how do I become the best that I can be? We're going to look at a little one of them and then we close. Then we we'll continue next week. Amen. Amen. Is somebody in church this morning? Yes, sir. Are you getting blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to look at this concept. Change your mindset. Your decision determines your destiny. Accountability. Then we look at the others. If we can get there before the end of service, fine. Praise God. Hallelujah. How do I become the best I can be? Number one, change your mindset. Let me tell you what. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. That is, change the way you think. Change your mentality. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7 b it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, that is in his mind, in his soul, that is how you think in your mind, the sum total of your thoughts process that makes your mentality, you know, so easy. There are some people that carry the mindset that you can never make it in Nigeria. You can never make it. Yes, you won't make it. And there are some that believe that because we have a Milokor as the president, things will fall apart for them. That is their own thinking. <laughs> as a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. My Bible tells me in Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come. He said, Though cross darkness will cover the earth. But when it comes to you, the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. So, when you see darkness, it's an evidence that there will be light upon you. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, so, if you carry that kind of mindset, no matter what you see in the economy, you will not subscribe to failure. So, as a man, think it in his heart, truly, so is it. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 says, I built you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies, that's a foundation, as a living sacrifice. Don't touch unclean things. Only acceptable, and don't make your body unclean. Only and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reason. What do you think? What do you use to reason? Your mind. So even the ability to live a holy life is a function of using your brain. <laughs> Let me say that again. Even the ability to live a holy life is a function of using your brain. A man invites you to his house at night and says only him is at home. And he says, Come late in the night and stay over. 
If your brain is working at all, you don't need prayer to know his intention. So, ability to live a holy life is also a fault of your brain. Ability to act in a right relationship, in a good marriage, also involves the use of your mind. So, as a man, think it is a, or as a woman, think it is a, so your level of thinking determines the level of marital bliss you experience. If a woman does not know other than to talk and to shout, then the experience that comes out of those kind of marriages will you get. Hallelujah. So, in verse 2 it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove. That means to prove something is to make it so in your own life. You know, if I tell you that God is a God that make it rich, I will show it in my life by becoming rich too. That because I'm following God, can't you see my life? I am now living the riches, the riches of God are manifesting my life. So I've been able to prove it. So it's now saying, if you are if you are able to renew your mind from level to level, you begin to prove the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So you will graduate from the good level to the acceptable level. And as you're going to renew your mind, you graduate to a level where you can live and enjoy the perfect will of God for your own life. The perfect will for your business, for your career, for your journey in life, for your children. The perfect will of God for my children is for them to be the head and not the daily class. It's for them to live a good life and enjoy their parents. The perfect will of God for you is to live inheritance for your children's children. That mindset is what you need for this time. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now to him that is God who is exceeding who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. So asking is prayer. Thinking carries the same weight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, somebody did just say what I said. Uh, he's able to do what we ask or think. So asking is prayer. And the Bible says that ask or think. It means that your thinking also carries equal weight with prayer. Just by thinking negative. Something negative can happen. It will be as if you pray for it. Just by deploying your imagination to think positive, which is the work that we need to do. The real war is inside your mind this year 2024. You can win on the inside, you will win on the outside. If you can win, if you consider yourself to be successful in your mind, it will reflect on the outside. If you see yourself as a failure, then you'll be a failure. You see yourself as a successful business person, successful career person, a successful leader, a successful minister. Carry the mindset that things will work for you this year. That is what you will be. Carry the mindset that you will have enough money to pay your school fees and go to university. Carry that mindset. It will begin to draw the resources. Carry the mindset that your business will not lack capital. Carry the mindset that you will not lack favor in your place of work. You begin to see the right customers come to you and you'll be interested in your welfare. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, your bosses, you'll be suddenly interested in doing you favors because that is the mindset that is controlling the world. The Bible says that he's able to do excellently abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So let the power of positive thinking be at work in you this year 2024. Let the power of positive thinking take over your life. When people say there's a casting down, you say there is what? A lifting up. Hallelujah. Change your mindset. Look at the story of Joshua and Caleb. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, verse 13 to 33, that Caleb, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. That was the mindset that Caleb had. But look at the other elders. So it's not a function of age. You may be young and God will distinguish you. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't let nobody leave it to this year. He said, no grief for anybody. This is the way to do it. Amen. This is the positive no grief. Amen. Amen. Not fighting conductor on the road and driver in the car. By the time you hold the steering that you're holding it between everybody who enter that bush. Fight yourself to bring out your best Fight 
unleash your potential to bring out the good in you for the world to see. We want to see your manifestation. We want to see the new you manifest this year. We want to see a ten times better you manifest this year. We want to see a richer you manifest this year. A more buoyant you manifest this year. A more giving you manifest this year. Not that when the Lord of knocks and say, tell them I'm not around. <laughs> no. With confidence, open the door. Happy New Year, Lord. The Lord bless you. I have received the word from heaven that this year will be good for all of us. Yes. Before you know it, things will begin to work in your favor. It says, but the men who had gone up with him, may you not go up with the wrong people for a project. Yes. When you are going on an assignment, it's of value to you. Don't you know that even when it, that's why right, they are always very careful in selecting who will be on their train. <laughs> so that the wrong person so that wrong person will not join them on the train. And when they are saying, husband and wife, say, I do, I do to each other, it's the husband that is busy targeting. Uh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, and but the men that went up with them said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Who told them that? They told themselves by what they were saying. That's why when you hear walk by faith and not by sight, that is what it means. They were walking by sight. They were not walking by faith. I'm jumping the message. But that is it. They were moved by what they were saying. And they concluded in their own mind. And, said, and they said, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land. Please run away from people that will spread bad news towards you this year. Run away. Any carrier of bad news away with them. Bye bye to Jati Jati. Bye bye to Rede Rede in the name of Jesus. Anybody that's coming with bad news on the way, the Lord will turn them back. Amen. Ah, it is that even is not, it's not strong enough. I said, anybody come with bad news for you this year, the Lord will turn them back in the name of Jesus. That bad thing that they want to talk about, it will not happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, and there we, he said, they went through the land, uh, we have got a spies in the land uh, that divorces in Africa. That's how some people are talking about Nigeria now. That that Nigerian power. Uh, don't go back there. Uh, that land, they are dying there. It's devoting the inhabitants. They are dying in hunger. This one, that one. And then that's what they were telling people. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Eh? Is that what the Lord said? Said, and we saw the giant, the descendant of Anna came from the giant, and we, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. <laughs> Can you tell that they are, they, are, they are thinking of themselves as being destroyed? They now have low self esteem. They now have self doubt. They are now doubting their own potential and their own ability. May you not come to that post or position in this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, and so we were in their sight. So they first berated themselves before the giants too berated them. You know, mind the way you appear at certain interviews this year because opportunities are coming your way. Amen. They will give you positions that you think is bigger than you, but don't say no. Say amen. amen. <laughs> I'm speaking with testimony right now. Do we have national relevance? Amen. Do we have international impact? Amen. Do we make significant impact this year? Amen. Don't doubt your God's message on your life. Number two, and I'll round up with this. Your decision determines your destiny. Everybody say, my decision, my decision. determines my destiny. Like destiny. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 to 20, he says, if ye be willing and obedient. So, to be willing and take action is a choice. Right? If you are willing, that's your will. God gave man will. That will is free. So that you can use it. That's what we call free will. You can use it. You can decide for God. You can decide against God. This year, 2024, may you decide what will be good for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God help us to make the right decisions in 2024. Amen. So if ye be willing and obedient, what will happen? You will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you can see the opposite decision now. Ye shall be devoured. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. He said, they shall be devoured with sword, for the mouth of the Lord is that spoken it. 
So it's possible for people to be devoured based on their wrong decision making. If you make a wrong decision in business, for instance, it can kill the business. If you make a wrong decision in investment, it can kill the finance of the family. If you make a wrong choice for your children to school, to go to school, if you make the wrong school choice for your children, they can become bastards by wrong association. I remember one time we changed the school for my children and then daddy will come home and begin to say certain things. I said, there's one boy in my class always saying this. Uh, we have to attack the issue head on. I said, don't say it again and never ever make friends with that boy. When he comes to you, report him to the teacher. And then we engage the teacher as well. I said, there's a young boy in your, in your class that wants to be influencing this boy negatively. Maybe it's around adults that are careless in their home. And it's impacting on what that child is taking from home and is taking it to school. So don't leave anything to chance in and around your life and around your children. Whoever you are leaving behind at talk with them must be properly screened so that you can your labor will not go to waste. What is it to labor over it a child and then they end up becoming pastors? That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. There are children who steal their father's property documents and go and treat them. Let me share a very interesting one with you. One man, <laughs> before he died, somebody in the family has stolen information for him to go and open an estate account in his name. Somebody is still alive, they have opened an estate account in his name. And they started collecting all the dividends into that account. The man had not died. All the shares, he has millions in different companies who are going to that account and they were not receiving it. So when the man died and it was time to share the inheritance, even though they had a will in their hands, they couldn't access the inheritance because somebody had played a foul game when the man was alive. Decisions. Decisions. Now look at this. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. He says, Joshua was telling the children of Israel, he said, and if it seemed evil to you, to serve the Lord. You know, some people find it difficult to serve God. They, they, they always make it look like the pastor is disturbing them when they say, come to church. When they say, come and pray, come and go for evangelism. They make it look like the, the, this serving God is so evil to my nature that it's a disturbance. He said, okay, no problem, no problem. No. We're not going to force anybody now. If you think that it's evil for you to be in church, if you think that it's evil to participate in the things of God, okay, no problem. Choose for yourself this day who you will serve. If you think that you want to be like your other youths that are playing football up and down on Sunday morning, watching Netflix, going about, going partying and wasting their life, if you think that is what pays you, no problem. Make your choice. Choose for yourself this day who you will serve. It's a matter of choice. Whether the gods of your fathers, the, the God that your father said, or the one that on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorite, in whose hand you dwell, in whose land you dwell. No problem. If that's what you want to choose, choose it. No problem. He said, But as for me and my own house, <laughs> we shall serve the Lord. Decisions. Daniel became distinguished with the other guys. But the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, he said, Daniel proposed in his heart not to defy himself with the king's ritual. See where they ended. They became counselors to the king. They were in the topmost of the topmost level. Oh, but that was so bad. Years ago, let me share this. Years ago, I had the privilege to lead, to be part of a major project or a, a retreat in the office, in the bar. One of my colleagues and we worked together and we got stuck in the same room that night because we didn't have any place to stay. And we had a lot of assignment to do overnight because we were delivering the report by Monday. So we finished on Saturday and then we had to stay over in the hotel overnight. And here is a master bedroom with all the luxuries inside. And so we were stuck in the room. For no, we didn't plan it. The lady slept all night on the bed. I chose to be on the table all night reading and walking and i'm not talking about an ugly woman no. i'm talking about a beautiful yellow purple woman i am blessed today it's not by accident can god trust you in this year that you will you will stand up for him 
Can God trust you this year that He is looking for a way to promote you and lift you beyond your mates? And make us tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I was paying that. Hey, I wish I was a book. Ah, the kind of person. Oh, I wish I was drawing. How long to see the more time that I took that paper, married her. Ah, Jesus. Ah, that you deserve this. Young people. Your choice is a human right. We know. Is it not my life? Why are you telling me it's my life? Anything like that. No problem. Your choice is your right. But every decision has consequences. And you can see. Every decision has consequences. If you want to be disobedient to parents, there is a consequence. If you want to be disobedient to elders, if you don't want to show respect to people who are ahead of you, it has consequences. If you want to be rude to your bosses, it has consequences. You can be paid for promotion, but you are rude to your senior. Has consequences. But to be talking anyhow in the public, like every other young person, it has consequences. Talking about government anyhow on social media, they'll come and carry you one day. It has consequences. And by, don't pay your tax, it has consequences. Don't register your, your, your documents for business. Don't register, don't renew your license. It has consequences. One day I was driving out and then I met this, uh, I met the, the officers. They said, ah. They will bill you for this thing. Oh, your paper is expired. By the following week, this is just January. I incur 60,000 dollars debt. Fine. 20,000, 20, 20, 20. I'm your pastor. I'm telling you the truth. I offended the law and I was sanctioned. So it's not about I am a man of God. I am above the law. No, no, no. The law that Jesus Christ set you free from is the law of sin and of death. You must obey the law of your heart. Decision has consequences. You are responsible. And a matter of fact, I was I was not feeling well during the period I should have done, but that is not an excuse. You are responsible for your decisions. You are the sum total of all your decisions from yesterday. So whenever you find yourself doing, don't blame your uncle, don't blame your sister, your friend. My father was an orphan when he arrived in Lagos. Today he has built houses, he sent us to good schools. He's married, he's living in his own house. He's over 80 o'clock, he clocked 83 uh, on, the, on the 13th. I don't know. Living in his own house, collecting rent from tenants. He had no father or mother when he arrived in Lagos. You are the sum total of all your yourself. The more quality decisions that you make, right? The more the quality of the life. Rise to your feet this morning. So, how do you make better decisions? Number one, invest in book study. Invest in knowledge. Invest. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. The first year of the reign of, of in the first year of his reign, I Daniel understood by books. And the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. I, Daniel, understood by books. So you sharpen your thinking for better decisions. Daniel understood by books. So which book are you reading this year? Which book have you started reading this month? I picked up a book by John Maxwell this morning, and I was fired up. Be all you can be. That's my wife's book. I picked it up. And as I was going through the book, I now noticed that there is a particular part of it that I have underlined. I forgot to have read the book. I just went back to that part. Your decision determines your destiny. And I saw my handwriting all over. I've marked it here, marked it here, marked it here. I said, so I've read this book before. So the thing that they're working inside me saying is, I just did revision. The best part of learning is revision. Revision. So the book that you have abandoned that is decorating your house or your shelf or your e-books, go and start picking them up so that you can start making a, you know, sharpen your thinking. What you think is impossible will become possible by the time you start reading. Somebody with better ideas will rub off on you. People that have made it in Nigeria have made books, have written books. Go and buy their book. There's a book that I've, I've read and I'm still reading. He said, can every Nigerian become a millionaire? Yes, that title, I have it. By the time I read some portions of that book, I was on fire. 
I told myself, I can never be poor in this Nigeria again. I can never be poor. Whoever is in government, let it be in government. It doesn't matter. I may not be that good, but I can never be poor. There are many young people that are making money without stealing. He says, I Daniel understood my books. Look at um, the second one. Change your association. You've got to be able to make right decisions. <laughs> I met a young lady in the bank that just joined the bank. I said, sir, are you still going to be here with me? By the time, I said, ah, is this my branch? Or they just brought me here just for training. I said, well, the decision is not mine. But since they put you here for now, this will be your office. But I don't know the machine. He says, sir, no. I don't want them to change me. I want to be here with you. So you can be my mentor. That's a young banker. So you can be my mentor. I said, wow. Okay. You're welcome. Whatever I can do to support you, I will do it. I have many young ones that are mentored, that are abroad now. One of them called me from UK last two weeks. I said, Pastor, my mentor. In fact, if you see the way she addresses me on WhatsApp, it even gets my wife jealous sometimes. No, no not jealous anyway, but just, just saying that. Because she's a female. Or you understand what I'm saying? That somebody is addressing with so much love and appreciation because you have made so much impact in their lives. Simply send me the account number of the church. The Lord is our shepherd. She wired the money in less than 20 minutes. And I said, Wow, this is the Lord's doing. What are you going to touch people's lives if you are not better? How are you going to be a blessing to others if you are not blessed? How will you be blessed if you are not thinking well? So get to the books this year. Change your association. The friends that will take you to your next level, those are the ones you should be intentional this year about friendships. The association will keep. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 17, iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Amen. The last slide on make decision. This is an assignment for you all. Amen. Let's show them the assignment. So these are the questions. What is your potential status? What have you written? What do you think you can achieve this year? So look at the assignment. What right decisions did I make last year? What wrong or poor decisions did I make last year? Go and list them. And then you now make a thought list. What right decision should I be making in 2024 so that I can follow through on them to ensure that the wrong ones don't repeat themselves this year? And the right ones, I keep doing them. And then what new ones should I be making? For instance, an example is when should I get off from bed? When should I get off from bed? When should I go to bed? Which, what, what kind of decision should I be making? Which book should I be reading? Which friend should I be picking? Different, different things. Right decisions. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven and give God praise. Have you been blessed by the word of God this morning? Yes, Have you been blessed? Yes, I can't hear your response. If you know you have been blessed, then put your hands together for Jesus. And put your hand on your chest this morning and say, Lord, I receive grace. Oh, I, receive I receive grace for increased learning ability. I receive grace for sound judgment. Grace to make the right decisions in 2024. Grace to become the best I can be. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big hand this morning.